Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Moose 5 Ton. Today we are doing the dual fuel filter kit from Ken Spencer along with Ted's tubes. <laughs> kind of a funny pair there. Um, but the fuel line tube as well. So I'm only going to be doing the uh, pickup end today. I will be replacing the return line and the return tube as well. However, I haven't finished uh, sourcing uh, exactly what I need to do the return line section of it. So that will be a, another part. Um, but I will explain that in this video because it does, it does coincide with it and it's pretty, that part of it's pretty easy. It's just a line and the tube and I'll show you where they go. Um, so Ken's kit comes with the housing now. It's one piece, both your uh, filter mounting brackets. These come in a little baggie. They go on either end. Um, and then you have to source your filters. I got Napa Gold filters. 3405, which is the fuel water separator, uh, down to 14 microns. So it's both of the ones he wrote on his sheet that he sends you with the kit that he says he uses. It has the drain valve at the bottom. Brand new. And there is an O-ring in the box. And then 3528 is your 2 micron fuel filter second line. It's your secondary filter here. Get out of the box for you. And it's just the filter itself. There's no o-ring on this one. So that's your two Napa filters. 14 micron, 2 micron. Um, this is your leader line from the housing to the pump and then this is your line that replaces from the housing back to the fuel tank if you buy ken's kit it comes with the male and for the, the i'm going to call them tubes the tubes that are already on your truck the ones that are military if you buy ted's tubes um, and plan to replace the fuel tubes you have to i'm going to have to measure this and then end up cutting this square and replacing it with this connector here. So this will push into the tube. I'll have to seat this in the tube instead and then it'll attach to the new uh, fill tube. All right. So let's go over to the truck. Um, actually real quick we'll finish what we need here for this. One inch wrench uh, that you use to tighten down this at the very end. These you just hand tighten in here. And then once you get everything hooked up and in the position it needs to be in, this bracket here will tighten in on itself, collapsing this O-ring against the housing. And if you watch Ken's video online, I'm not going to repeat everything he says, but he goes over these in depth very well and how you need to set this up. Um, the only difference today is in his video he had the old style which was the part that mounted to the truck was the two piece he used to bolt the piece to the top of the unit now he made it all one l l bracket so you just literally bolt it right to the truck i went out and bought two stainless steel bolts and two washers with nylon thread so it doesn't back off i'm also going to use red thread, red thread locker um, the size of the bolts are 3 8 16 and it's an inch and a half so it should be plenty long enough for what we need to go through this and then through the unit itself it should be plenty long enough 9 16 ratchet and an inch and 1 16th uh, wrench I don't have an inch and 1 16th wrench unfortunately uh, when I go above an inch I get limited on the tools I have at this moment so I have a uh, crow foot actually from a set of tools somebody gave me an odd set of tools so this just attaches to a ratchet if I get the ratchet head off with this one and I will use this to loosen up um, where it attaches to the pump so let's go over to the truck now All right, guys, here we are at the truck. I'm just going to quickly run through what we're going to be doing here. So, 
here's your pump, right, there's your pump, here's where the line comes in, get behind the tire here. Um, a great tip to do, which you can't see in the video, is when you park the truck, turn the tire hard to the right. That pushes the tire on the left side out so you can get behind it. Um, but here's where your line comes into the pump. This is you're going to be replaced. So this is an inch and a sixteenth. This whole line gets replaced down here. You just have to take off this um, uh, hose clamp or line clamp. It's just a rubber uh, gasket. This is nine sixteenths. It's just a uh, a bolt into the frame. You can see it there. And then this goes back to the old style filter housing this guy and then obviously everybody knows this guy goes back to the line which is the, the uh, copper line which goes back to the fuel tank so all of this gets replaced with this kit so we're going to dismount this the entire housing and filter and all this is now trash the entire line up to the block is trash or up to the pump and then the entire line that goes from this back to the fuel tank is trash. However, the, the copper line that goes from this back to the fuel tank, you don't take out. You just disconnect it, you leave it in there, and you use it as a mounting point for your new line. That way you can secure your new line to it and it doesn't all um, move around and have weird rub points because all the line, all the new lines are rubber. Your sizes. 9 sixteenths for the top three uh, bracket bolts. Um, this is 13 sixteenths for the line that goes from the uh, filter back to the pump. And then that's all you need right now to get disassembling. So we're going to disassemble it. We're going to get it off the truck. And then we'll be back uh, where to go from there. All right, so we are disassembled. A um, couple pointers. This I want to give out. This guy, no problem. Loosened right up, came right off. This guy, not too bad. Um, obviously, there's a nut on the bottom side of it, so just make sure you hold the bottom side of it as you go to loosen it. And then your bracket for the old housing. This thing, let me get under here, a better view of it. There we go. This thing, I don't think it's ever been touched since, if I, since a long time. Honestly, I mean, I'll give it a little bit of credit, probably 2010 when the truck was overhauled. Um, it went to one shop, I will not name them, because I'll be professional, and I was charged for both labor and the parts for a fuel, fil for a fuel filter swap. Do I think it was done? No. I, I can almost guarantee it wasn't done. Looking at the corrosion on the filter housing, I don't even know how they get it apart and the corrosion matches it exactly as if it was never taken apart ever. So, I'll leave that as is. Um, this, I used a combination of ratchets and wrenches because of how tight it is in here. So I would suggest you have your standard wrenches. Let me grab it down here. Standard wrenches. Obviously, remember all this is 9 sixteenths. I had a ratchet. Um, I actually ended up needing to use, here we'll pan down here to the carpet on the full lowest. I actually ended up needing to use uh, a three quarters ratchet and a um, breaker bar for the ratchet because um, it was being that much of a pain in the ass. Uh, but getting back here was a pain in the neck. So I also had to remove this fuel line and push it up. This is the old one, the uh, brass one. 
so I could get to this bolt here. Uh, just to, just something to think about if you can't get the wrenches back there or yours is really being a pain in the neck um, Yeah, you can push this up I took this off and pushed it out of the way and was able to get the ratchet back there Also, if you see this stuff back here, nothing's leaking um, I sprayed PB blaster on these three bolts because they weren't coming off by themselves They were pretty rusted up and corroded so I put a PB blast on everything I loosened up The other thing to note is when you take this fitting off the filter housing let the camera focus here Det or, uh, diesel fuel will leak out of this diesel fuel will come out of this probably Dixie cup worth and then when you go to take the filter housing off the unit and I took it down to the ground um, it will come pouring out the obviously the open end that you took this off of because there's fuel in there too some residual more came out of the line than out of the filter housing but again just something to think about where you're doing this when you take it apart and I have a oil catch mat below me it's one of these mats that absorbs stuff so that's it for that everything's disassembled um, we haven't touched anything on the gas tank yet so we'll get to that we're gonna get everything mounted up here and run to the back and then we'll move back there so all right guys we are back making good progress um, Lines attached to the block. Let me get back here. Lines attached to the block for now. Now before I finish this, I will say this now, just so I don't forget later. I'm gonna take this off again. All right, I'm gonna take this off and um, put it in like a cup. I might put like a cup or something down here. All right, so I'm just gonna drain it down here. And I'm gonna pressurize the air system until I get fuel out of here, right? That way it pressurizes the whole system with fuel. I'm gonna pre-fill the filters with diesel. I have a can of diesel sitting here. And it's also going to run a quick thing of fuel through the lines just in case anything is left in this entire system, just so it doesn't go into the engine. So that's gonna be my like double extra safety precaution, but that's what I'm gonna do right before I connect it. As soon as we get fuel out of it, I'm gonna connect it up there um, everything's Teflon, Teflon taped with uh, liquid thread sealant, Hermitex liquid thread sealant, so every connection has that on it. So that's connected, ran this down, sits there, goes behind that, pretty much followed the exact same route of the old line, and then we get over here, which you guys can see this in the camera focuses, and comes down here. I put this on, this on the elbow connector before I put it in here all right these are in but not 100% tight actually I had a problem with this one these are brand new stainless steel bolts 316 stainless steel um, 3 8 inch and a half um, bolts I stated them earlier in the beginning of the video so that's these however this one had a problem I think the threads were messed up so I have to go get another one um, this one won't thread the nut properly but they're in there they're just holding it right now this one's pretty snug this one's just a little um, loose but not 100% tight yet and when you put these guys let's step down here a second these guys in these guys you just hand tighten too um, but you leave them kind of loose so you can adjust them you know forward backwards as you're making the line fit and then when you put these on the elbow connectors it's hand tight and then quarter turn do not over tighten these you will screw up the fitting you will strip it and then you're screwed the fitting on the hose can be messed up or the fitting on this can get messed up and Ken states that as well so do not over tighten your connections um, again everything is thread sealed on this end what goes into here um, comes out over here you can see it and then goes up into the line that goes back to the tank so once I got everything fitted you then come in with an inch wrench and you tighten down these so you, you get them hand tightened to where the o-ring is just sitting up against this lip and then once everything's fitted and it's in the right angle you come in with an inch wrench and you tighten these down and get, um, pretty snugly to the the bracket so these you can put some pretty good torque on but again don't overdo it you can strip things all right but good body weight torque will, will make them nice and snug get everything thread sealed up so when that dries 
um, it'll be even extra uh, sealed. A good pointer to note I want to make coming up here with this line, make sure I can see it in the camera. You have to watch when you run lines that are rubber for rub spots. This is kind of an awkward spot to be in. You can kind of see where already on the hose it was sitting on the frame before I tightened it down. You can see it right there. If you let that sit on the frame, you will get a hole in a couple of years, if that long, right? If that rubber constantly rubs on the metal, it'll wear, it'll wear through, all right? So you have to watch for rub spots when you run these lines. So I had to pick it up. I had to hold the line back as I tightened the bracket to the base, all right? So just something to think about. And it's also the same up here. Right? When I tighten this down, I'm leaving the old line in there for a mounting point, and the old line's round. So yeah, we're touching the old line, but the old line is round versus the squared off corner on this bracket, which is for the mud flap. So you have the old line, which is hitting the mud flap bracket, and then the hose goes around the old line. So you have a lot less chance, <laughs> a lot less, a lower chance of it making a hole in your rubber line on something smooth versus something squared off right but I still got to be careful with this guy here right so I don't know I might actually come back later and cut this off right and just completely cut this off and get it out of the way because I don't need it anymore and you know you're only reusing the two bolts so but we'll see but just something to consider when you're running lines you know watch for rub spots and watch where stuff's resting against so that goes back Followed the exact same route of the old fuel line, and then let's go back to the fuel tank here where we started. Okay, so it comes out here back at the fuel tank. You have feed line, a pickup, your return line, which this is what I'm going to talk about at the very end, which I'm going to do later. Your vent line number one, which is coiled into a loop, which comes over. I have this tray on my gas tank, some trucks have this, some don't. Um, if you look underneath though, here's your vent line number two, which goes in and then comes into this T right here, right? And then this feeds up here and goes up my intake for the vent, all right? So that's your lines that are on the gas tank. So now, um, where my video differs too than any, anybody's I've seen online so far is I'm not only doing the fuel filter kit, but I'm doing the tubes that drop down into the tank as well all right so i disconnected the old line we're keeping that as a mounting point right just push it back for now um we have the rubber line coming out here so if you were stopping at this point this goes right in here and you're done all right tighten that down you're done but i'm replacing these as well so just let that sit for now and then this is um i just got a pair of vice grips it appears to be 5 sixteenths I think yeah 5 sixteenths so it's 5 sixteenths to get it out um, just you know, lefty loosey comes out it wasn't really hard at all and then just be careful your return line you don't damage it and then you gotta pull this out right there's your old brass your brass tube you gotta pull out and get out of the tank so all right so that's what you got to pull out and get out, but I'm not going to pull that out right this second, All right? But that's what's going on with that. So that's where we're at so far. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, we are back and believe it or not, everything is done. Um, but let's step back where we left off first. So we left off with disconnecting the feed line from the tank and I said, this is where mine differs and I'm gonna be changing out the actual draw tube that goes into the tank. If you're going to put in the tube Ted makes or you're gonna make your own or whatever you're gonna do, it, it's a pain in the ass, first of all. Second of all, you have to pull your tank out. I could not get it in and I could not get the old one out without uh, the old one I cut because obviously I'm not keeping it. So to save on time, I cut the old one with, a, with bolt cutters, pulled it out, and then um, that one, there was no way I was fitting that in there with the tank in its position. So you have to loosen these straps up, you have to come down here, 
you have to loosen these up and then the whole tank will pull out now be careful you have to watch your vent lines you have to take off the return line because it's too tight for you to pull the tank out so take off the return line and then you also have to disconnect your fuel sending unit back here you have to pull the um, connector out and you also have to technically you have to disconnect the ground make sure you guys can see here you have to disconnect the ground which goes to the frame rail um i didn't do this and i pulled on the tank and i pulled the ground right off the frame rail now anyway it's, i found another issue when i checked this bolt this bolt was really loose to begin with and there was actually a, this is a common ground so there's other stuff on it on the back side of the frame rail for other items i don't know what they are and um one of them was was completely broken off and wasn't grounding out at all the wire was just hanging there so tomorrow i'm going to take this bolt out i'm going to clean this up i'm going to replace it with a new bolt and fix all the grounds i'll put a new end on this attach it back and then plug it in we should be good to go so that's tomorrow's project but that's just something to think about if you're going to pull the tank out and your ground's okay you know and mine ended up helping me out but your ground's okay disconnect the ground your, your best bet to disconnect the ground is probably actually take the screw out of here and take the ground off this side because like i said this bolt is not just a single bolt it goes through the other side and there's other stuff on it um on the back side for other items but so if you're going to do that that's what you need to do so you need to disconnect those things and then you're probably going to need a second person or again use your head and <laughs> i didn't do this make sure your tank's on the lower side i actually just put gas in my truck the other day so i have almost a full tank of fuel and let me tell you was it heavy but is what you need to do is you need to slide it out and you're going to find a point where the tank will teeter you know want to uh roll forward because it's it's on its balance point that's what you need to do so you need to find that point where it kind of wants to come forward but it's not going to fall off and you kind of stand in front of it support it with your legs slide it forward so now the back of it kind of picks up like this and then have another person just slide the tube in and you just have to slide it in there once it slides in there then you can set it back and you can get it all um screwed in and everything uh once the tank's back and not gonna fall out so once you're to this part uh sorry getting the camera in here make sure you guys can see because i know it gets dark back here ted's uh jacket here is three quarter three quarters inch wrench so um tighten that down mine went around about four or five times and then on the sixth time it got really tight and came to kind of like facing like facing out here almost so i wasn't going to force it back around to face the frame rail so i stopped it and i went back just probably a little less than 180 degrees and then i connected the lines um everything is thread sealed I'm just vent line keeps getting my way i apologize the vent line is sticking up in the air right now the vent line or um everything's thread sealed and then Again, I mentioned this before, the male fitting on here that Ken sends with his tube does not fit on the new tank uh, feed line, the tank tube. So what I did was I was not reusing the male fitting, so I cut a slice down the middle of it. I know that destroys the fitting. I wasn't reusing it. I threw it in the trash. I cut a slice down the middle of it to save how much rubber I had to cut off. Cut a small slice down the middle of it. I then pried it away from the fitting and popped the fitting out. It was maybe halfway down the fitting and I could get the fitting out. Then right behind where the slice ended, probably a good quarter inch, a decent, a decent gap that it wasn't going to tear, but not super far. You then take a super sharp knife and cut it nice and flush nice and flat and flush and as square as you can then i took ted's fitting that came on his 90 degree 
and I put it on this part. So I screwed it on here. It wasn't tightened yet, but I screwed it on here. And then I took some motor oil, some general motor oil, and lubed up the barbs. Then you just take the hose, you grab the hose evenly, and you just push it on nice and slow. And you just push it all the way in with some good force. It'll slide right in, no problem. That way you don't have to worry about this part moving on you, kinking the hose, ripping the hose, nothing. You got a nice sturdy thing to press on and if you do it nice and slow and take your time, you'll have no problems. And trust me, the, the motor oil slid right on there. A lot easier than I even thought it would. So that's all that. Then you tighten this down. This is 7 eighths. Pretty sure it's a 7 eighths. Sorry, I've cleaned up now, but 7 eighths here, um, 3 quarters to tighten this in and then that's all this is to redo uh actually i'll touch on that at the end of the video but so that's that that is all done and then let's come up to the front of the truck now and we'll finalize this this was pretty much finalized before um but now you can see the filters are on so we got napa 3405 that's your two-stage fuel water separator that's the primary filter it's down to 14 microns and it removes water from the fuel if you have any. Then you have your secondary filter, which is a 3528 from Napa, and that is a 2 micron fuel filter. So that filters down to 2 microns before the fuel gets to the, the pump and then into the engine. Then you have the line come up and the line goes into the engine. Like I said way back, probably two videos ago, maybe a video ago, I'm forgetting, I'm doing so much today. Um, that was on there in the other video but i did take it off and i set a bucket actually somebody helped me i had a bucket sit right here just a five gallon bucket and i drained that hose down and then you come over here hopefully the sun glare doesn't fight me today now nah, it looks like it's down by now and this is your vent line for your fuel tank this goes down and feeds into the t and for the two vent lines like i said and that um, is how you pressurize your tank if you don't have a valve stem in the gas cap. So I don't have a valve stem in my gas cap. I, I wasn't going to go through putting one in today. Um, just wasn't what I wanted to do and somebody recommended this way. So I figured, hey, we'll give it a shot and, you know, I'll open up other opportunities for people who don't have a valve stem. It worked, but it did not work as people explained online. So let me get into that. You need an air compressor. And I have a 15-gallon portable air compressor. Um, take an air chuck. If you have a rubber end, fine. Mine has a, a metal end. I, I mine actually fit in there. Stick it in there, and you pressurize it. Mine took almost two minutes, three minutes actually to pressurize, and then you'll get fuel that comes out up here. So the fuel will actually finally it'll flow through all the filters. It'll flow through all the lines, and you'll get fuel that actually starts to pour out of the end and that's why I had it in the in the five gallon bucket. The other reason I had it in a five gallon bucket and not just loosen up here which a lot of people do is between everything going on today, having all these lines, you know, they were open, the filters weren't on for a little bit. I wanted to run a quick bit of fuel through everything, starting from Ted's tube all the way up. And if anything got in anywhere, it was going to drain out into the five gallon bucket. And then, you know, it drains out into the five gallon bucket, you get some residual in the bottom. It will stop. It doesn't continuously come out unless, you know, if you keep pressure on it, sure. But if you stop the pressure, it'll stop. Wipe it off. And then come back up and connect it to your engine. All right. And then you're good to go. And now you have the whole system is primed with fuel. And now you should just be able to turn it right over. You don't have to mess with the injection pump or any of that if you're going to mess with the injection pump or your primer pump excuse me here's your primer pump here on the a1 um i didn't mess with it because i hear a lot of people say as soon as they mess with it o-rings get messed up something leaks and now you're into even more more things to fix take apart and it's just why open more cans of worms these trucks are enough cans of worms to begin with so that's everything to do with this um the only thing I have to do tomorrow is I'm going to zip tie the lines down and secure the lines. We're just running out of daylight tonight and I have something else to do. 
Everything's tightened, everything's thread sealed. The truck runs. We're actually gonna go fire it up here, prove it, and that's it. We're done. Um, the only other thing I'll note is if you notice, it's probably in other videos, there was a tray here too. Some trucks have a tray here, some trucks don't. It actually bolts right here, four bolts. Um, if you're gonna do the tube that goes down in the tank, you have to loosen that up. I took mine off because when I flipped it over, it's extremely corroded on the bottom. I'm gonna clean it up and fix it. But you have to take that off. You cannot move the tank enough with the fuel cap in the way with that, um, that I don't know what you want to call it, a plate, that plate in the way around the fuel cap. So loosen it up. You won't be able to pull it right out. Loosen it up, it'll drop down. Just be careful of your vent lines. Don't break your vent lines. And then once you get the tank kind of situated out where it pulls out a little bit, you'll be able to remove it fully if you want to, or you can just let it sit there enough to get your tank out to get that in. Um, return line. We'll touch on the return line real quick and then we'll fire the truck up and we'll be done. This is the return line. This is the other tube you get with Ted's kit. You get the feed tube and the return tube. However, Ted and Ken do not send any return line replacement. No, no issue on them, they just don't do it. I'm just stating that simply. I'm not upset about it or anything. You wanna you want fix your return line? It's on you, in my opinion. You just have to source the parts. So, um, this is your return. So again, you disconnect this. This should pull out. You might have to pull the tank out. You probably will, I can almost 99% guarantee it. Pull the tank out a little bit. It's in the front here on the A1, so it's a little easier. You pull the tank out a little bit, and then slide this guy out again, slip the new one in. And then you run your new rubber line all the way up, follow it up again. And the return line comes in up behind this one. The copper line comes all the way up here and feeds into this guy. And then the rubber line goes all the way up and ties in right here. There's your return line. So that's where you replace it out of. You take it off right off this T and you feed it all the way back. So that's your entire return line. But jump inside and we'll fire it up. So, uh, truck up, batteries, self check. My fuel gauge is not going to work because there's no ground. Fires right up. I had it running for probably about five to eight minutes before this video already once. It was a little sluggish in the beginning, give it time to work the air out of the system and get the fuel back in the system. Seems a little sluggish, it's not a problem. Let it go a little bit, give it some throttle.
So I hope this helps. I hope it gives you clear understanding. Any questions, feel free to ask us, message us, whatever you want. And I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Have a good night.